In a world of 350 billion movie podcasts, two chumps have decided that now is the time for cult movies to engage in combat. Disagreements will be had, blood may be spilled, and voiceover artists most definitely will not be paid. This is Cult Film Face-Off. Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 60. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. Hey, and I am Nick Leonard. Uh, firstly, a big thanks to Steve Ray for recommending the pairing of this week's films, which are two sci-fi action crime films. First out the box and short-circuiting, causing murderous intent, is Runaway from 1984. In the not-too-distant future, John Ramsey works as a cop in the Runaway Squad, which deals with out-of-control robots. John is called to a domestic disturbance where a robot has been programmed to kill. This leads him to uncover a plot plot to unleash a legion of killer robots run away it is the future mysteriously spreading across an unsuspecting city machines trained to serve humans are turning against them what do you got jerry model 912 cut up two people inside the house i'm going in mm. you're going in we can send a disarm robot in hit the floater it'll hit the disarm and any minute it's going to decide to hit the kid an ingenious conspiracy has begun and someone has to stop the madman who started it all we've got a non-standard chip here you can turn any domestic computer into a killing machine working late at night all by yourself i just had a few things to finish up no, no big I deal insist. let me help you nope. Bugs detected. Not a lot of bugs, Jackie. I thought it was Queen. Luther really wants to keep track of you. Why's that, Jackie? This is a bad guy. He's killed five so far. I want him. I'm telling you, I can't go out there. I can't go out! Runaway. Tom Selleck. Cynthia Rhodes. Gene Simmons. Runaway from TriStar Pictures. Right, Chet, Runaway. Had you seen it? Had you heard of it? Uh, definitely heard of it. I, when, when I, it was on uh, TV quite a lot when I was a kid. I loved Tom Selleck, loved Magnum P.I., and this looked like a wicked film. I don't know how I avoided seeing it. It was one of those movies that I always wanted to see. Um, never saw it. Um, yeah, so this was my first time. What about you? Never seen it, never heard of it. Never heard of it? Nope. Don't you remember this growing up? It's always on BBC One. No, no, nothing. It was always on at Christmas. Do you not no, remember no, that? No, 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 nothing. No, never come across it. I, on TV, that image with Tom Selleck with the gun, I was like, I've got to see no, that no. as a kid. No? Never no. seen it. No, how, never how came queer? across it. How queer? Uh, what did you think? Um, well, first of all, it, it begins, and I started thinking to myself, it, it starts off with Tom Selleck on a mission to go and basically go and pull a malfunctioning crop cutting droid out of a field and I thought so, hang on, what's his job he's a cop so he goes to this field and I thought okay is there some sort of arrangement with the people making the droids and the police it's some sort of insurance policy and the farmers are they scared to interact with this droid? and what's the deal he goes there he picks a droid out of a field and then he gives it back to the farmers I thought the farmers were quite funny they were all kind of like they all wore exactly the same truck of cats so they just went <laughs> I was like they, they were like farmers done in South Park yeah. <laughs> that's true but I just but I was like is Tom Selleck not obliged to replace or repair this thing? He just goes to a field, picks it up, and gives it back to the farmers. Are they scared? What's the story there? I mean, and also, this will never Get ever... trust no farming god. <laughs> this Stick to ne- god jobs! <laughs> 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 this, would, this would never be a division of the police force. I, I was no. like, what the I, fuck's I, going on? At, that, at this point, I thought, I've, I'm supposed to turn my brain off. And I did. And then, aside from the finale, which I'll get to, <laughs> this is a very, very entertaining film. Um, I think Michael Crichton doesn't really know how to direct action. I mean, I think the action scenes are workman like at very, very oh, best. I think that's being kind to the action that's, scenes. Yeah, they're, they're bad. They're fucking terrible. They're bad. But he can convey, he's really great at conveying conflict and dialogue, and he knows about structure. And I think when you have those two things down, you can come up short almost everywhere else and still have a compelling film. I thought this was really compelling. Uh, I think Michael Crichton's script is actually as fucking dopey as it is until the finale which I will get to it's a really like, uh, propulsive 
forward moving it's it's one of those hollywood movies that you just think they got this right everyone's sort of doing everything correctly it's it, it works it works as a sort of mass market entertainment so yeah I, I liked it until the ending which i'll get to yeah so you didn't you didn't think so much of this no i didn't i didn't okay. think so much of this um I, uh, tom Selleck battling a fax machine uh, <laughs> who is basically at best a robo uh, a, a robot wards uh, cast off who didn't make the cut um yeah i was just kind of like like Tom Selleck is so fucking stiff. He, he's His performance is so stiff. I didn't get at any point that he was ever going to uh, b- be a, a worthy foe to anybody. But then talking about worthy foes, I mean, I think possibly Dr. Luther, Gene Simmons, is the worst baddie I've ever yeah, seen in a film. It, it's up, it's it up is there. terrible. So I, for me, it was like... Two terrible lead performances. To, to, to be honest, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, Gene Simmons is terrible as Doctor Luther. I mean, just ter- just terrible. He's, he's unbelievably terrible. I mean, you can't you can't describe it without using the word pantomime. He juts his jaw out and he does that thing where he lows his head. Sucker. And he looks up. Like it, it's it's all it's all jawing to camera really badly. It's just like shit. It's you should a, never have been a, near a film set. He's a. Te- I mean, it's it's the, it's goofy to the fucking power of a million. I, I, it's the worst. It's the worst. It's, it is the worst screen. It is the worst screen baddie I've ever seen. It's a silly film anyway, and he takes it down several notches. Yeah. I mean, it, he he is fucking abominable in yeah. this film actually. But uh, yeah, and <laughs> he's a twat in real life as well. But uh, yeah, terrible terrible band, terrible fucking screen presence. Um, um, so, and, and 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 Selleck is just not. I mean, I really was just like, has Selleck just formed a career from having a really good moustache? <laughs> so I mean, he's the, terrible. Thing, he is stiff as a board. He's, he's just not convincing in the action scenes. There's a scene where he has to like kick through a door. He doesn't actually. He he raises his foot about two inches off the ground and just goes poof. Like he's just really. He is wet. I he think, is stiff as a board and he is wet as a flannel. Tom Selleck, I think his whole career is based around the fact that he has a great tash. Me, I th- <laughs> I think he's an overwhelmingly likable. Oh, he's just person. affable and good. Yeah, that, oh. That's it. I think that's the sum total of his career as unkind. That's as that fine sounds. in three men. And a, that's fine in three men and a baby. It's not fine it, in Runaway. I can understand. Of the, I, I like Tom Selleck, but I can understand why his big screen career never took off because the, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't work in this film. He has no range. I mean, the, the, there's two scenes that I remember explicitly at the beginning. When he's introduced to his new partner, there's a scene where he's walking behind her and he's just looking at the floor or looking at her belt or something. He's like, "Oh, he's supposed to be checking her out," but Tom Selleck's just like <laughs> walking around looking at the floor. I'm like, he's supposed to be like oogling her and he can't pull that off. Also, when he goes into that house at the beginning where there's a droid going apes it, which is really funny because you see this little droid on the floor with a gun that's supposedly firing a gun that everyone's scared. It's so terrible. But there's a, a cameraman comes in. To the like, what this uh, potential uh, gunfight, and Tom Selleck turns around to try and, and it's like he's trying to usher a fly away. He's like, get out, get out. He's but he, he doesn't he command. Even... He doesn't command. He doesn't command any authority no, at he, all. No. He, he, he I, doesn't. He, I don't get from him that he had this terrible fear of heights. And oh, all. No, I I mean, also, it's really kind of like I, I found it kind of wince inducing when he's trying to pull off that he's a loving father to that kid from Flight of the Navigator. Yeah, right. It, it, I, I, all the criticisms are, are completely. Legit about Tom Selleck. I just find I just find him likable. I'm like a middle aged house. I just like him. I just want to. <laughs> he's not. He doesn't make. I think it's his hard touch. I, I actually think when you get down to, to you get down to the the crux of it, he's got he's got a lovely a top t- lip, hair <laughs> follicles. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I mean that's, I mean, I mean uh, that's it with Tom Selleck, and I think you know he is a, he's a good-looking guy. You know, he's six foot two, he's built like whatever, he, he's fine to look at, but he is just not a good enough actor to carry this film. He didn't make it as a movie star, and this no, really and that, explains why. But absolutely, I, I don't. I, this didn't um, absolutely. derail the movie for me. No, but, but the film. I mean, the problem is this. I mean, this. I, I mean, the first twenty minutes. I was like, okay, I'm invested. Then he's he's fixing, yeah, as you know, we, we we touched upon the the, 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 the he, he's there with the hicks in the fields from yeah, sort so of. He, he, what's your job? You have to go to. I mean, why well, are he, they doing? Well, it? he he deals with robots that are malfunctioning. Whether it's on a building site dropping like heavy loads of uh, cement, but, or whether it whether it's someone in a field, not 
picking corn. <laughs> but there would <laughs> never be a division of the Well, of course it would. It's, it is completely... So it is so fucking stupid. It really is stupid. I mean, this film is a stupid movie. Yeah, it's, you it's know, Gene dumb. Simmons has this handgun which dispenses these, like, heat-seeking missiles. <laughs> so they could kind of do this whole technique of having a camera tracking people... Uh, very slowly. Very slow. Not like a fucking bullet would. You know, <laughs> that's kind of laughable in itself. And also, very slow-moving mechanical spiders just aren't much of a threat. Yeah, really there is only one sequence in this film that I think was actually done well and it's the sequence uh, which has a, a, a zinger of a Tom Selleck line when he's talking to the police who are, who are outside a bathroom trying to track Dr Luther and he goes congratulations guys you just staked out a roll of loo paper <sighs> loo paper? Yeah, because they go in there and it's just the loo paper. Yeah, but when have in America ever said loo paper? Did Crap a roll! <laughs> <laughs> did, did, was the line loo paper? I'll, I'll find out. We'll find out. Let's something. find out. <laughs> um, and, and the best sequences is, is, is one of the, uh, one of the uh, mechanical spiders comes down and kind of there's a... She looks kind of like a, a young, hot Maureen Lippmann, which is weird because she's not hot at all, but... <laughs> <laughs> the police officer's kind of hot. And she and, and she's, she's there and she gets attacked and literally an officer knocks on the door and just goes, and explodes. And I went, that's a good sequence. That was actually done really well. Because it's kind of thundering outside. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of kind of thundering yeah, right, yeah, weather yeah. outside. That was done really well. Um, yet yeah, this this movie, this movie is, is not a good movie. Um, I thought it was pretty good, actually. Yeah, I mean, the action sequences didn't have any kind of... They, they, didn't have any kind of energy or... Do you know what I mean? There was a sequence when there, there's a sequence when I mean, Kirstie Alley is good in this film. I'll say that as a positive. Um, Kirstie Alley, Kirstie Alley is Jackie, is, is sassy, she's strong-willed, and, and she sports some very formidable '80s shoulder pads. Yeah. Uh, she's really good in this film. But that whole sequence on the on the road, I mean, I was just there going, I, I'm not, I'm not getting any anything from this. I'm, I'm not feeling this on is, the road. Yeah, the robots are chasing and they're, they're going in between the cars. Oh, right. And Tom okay. Select looks no, like I thought that was pretty Tom, good. Oh, well, I was just I, there I going, nothing's happening. I think that the action scenes are really well written. They're very badly executed. I think Michael Crichton's not a great director in terms of the action, but... Um, but if you haven't got good action, you haven't got good central performances, you haven't got a good baddie, what are you left with in this movie pretty, that's a, entertaining? A pretty compelling story, I thought. I thought it was very, very compelling on a, on a sort of very, very basic mass market mass... It's like a... I, I, uh, the, the Wikipedia page of this seems to be a, have been written by a very, very like a super fan of this movie because it blames its lack of success on the fact that it came out amidst like Terminator uh, 2010 there were a load of great sci-fi movies yeah. that came out in the same window and I this has aged terribly I don't think it has aged that bad to be honest I, I just thought it was I mean the, the thing is this is the same conversation we had uh, a couple of episodes ago I think where I was just talking about it. I, I like the fact oh no last episode the Roger Corman one where I just like, I think it's a well told story, as stupid as it is, and I have a lot of appreciation for that. I mean, where this film really, really fails, I mean, actually, I'll, I'll say that it's quite cheap in that it keeps placing children in danger. It keeps doing that, and I'm like, stop with, you know, there's a baby in the house, so it's going to get killed. Um, and it is unintentionally funny. Seeing that little thing with a gun, <laughs> holding a gun in a claw that's supposed to be a threat to everybody, Ro that's funny. When Robot Wars goes bad. Yeah, and then you have Tom Selleck running away in slow mo with a bullet's POV. I mean, some of it's goofy as fuck and it's silly, but. Mm. I thought it was a well-told story. The, the end, sorry, the, the, the very end, on the construction site at night. Incidentally, if you saw this as a kid, you'd probably constantly get it mixed up with Three Men and a Baby because they both end in sort of very similar uh, construction uh, sequences at night yeah. that involve elevators. But That whole end sequence what, is just the, such an anti-climax. I don't... That, that's one of He the gets words. over his aversion immediately because he's in a lift. But he what, gets over his fear of heights. He goes to go and get his child. Mm. His child's in a lift. He goes in one lift that goes up... They put spiders on the lift. The sun comes down in the lift. Mm. He throws one of the spiders off. The mm. kid's not in a lift anymore. I'm just like, what's going on he, with these elevators? It, it's just, it's, 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 it's just it's fucking so, stupid. I was like, they really, really didn't it's know what stupid. they were doing. No, it's really stupid. And it's like, you know, you're meant to... Uh, what they are, you know, throwing down your throat this whole film is that Dr. Luther... Well, I mean, the Dr. Luther character... Let's fucking look at Dr. Luther character, right? Is that there is no backstory. There's no justification. He's just an evil man. Yeah, that's it's, it's like, what, why, what's his justification? What, yeah, why? I mean, why is he doing this? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> what? There's no explanation. That's true, that's true. Yes, he comes undone by his own evil doing, and all the spiders are slowly going towards yeah, yeah, him, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Um, and you're like, hang on a minute, I've been watching these spiders kill people for the last hour and a half. I know that your head should blow up. If your head's not going <laughs> to blow up, well, you're obviously not dead, are you? That's right. Which, which, which is what happens. 
And then when he does finally die, it's like a series of very disappointing indoor fireworks going off with yeah. little plumes of smoke I coming mean, out the, of his trousers. That whole, that whole thing it's still absolute it. butters. <laughs> it did foresee uh, uh, drones, though. There's the scene with the drone. I was like, oh, they exist now. Something from a sci-fi movie. <laughs> it's quite something. Right. But yeah, th- that that construction site finale is like what they. N- this is what I, I'm curious about because I think, like I said, I think the action scenes are very well written, but they're badly directed. Was that a really great action scene on the page that Michael Crichton just didn't know what he was doing? I mean, the elevators whole, going up and down. Whole, who's I mean, on, every what? every every action sequence was was done really poorly. Yeah, this is basic. You know, every time when they were, you know, they're trying to apprehend him. They're in the hotel room staking him mm. out. They came in. A couple of gunshots are fired. Someone has an exploding bullet put under her arm. Oh, I thought that that was... sequence was so over the top. She's she's kind of orgasming where he's trying to find the bullet and take it out of her. There was no dramatic tension in there. I just find it, this was complete and utter throwaway fluff. No, I thought this was actually quite... I, I, aside from the, the absolutely diabolically poor finale, I thought this was a really... I think everything, there's so many diabolically it's, poor things I thought it was a really well-made film, uh, and I was uh, uh, completely compelled. But um, what was Mel made about it? The action sequence is really terrible. I think the, the, the performances they don't, they don't, were they, don't, they, they, they weren't exciting. Um, I but think, then you, that's all you've got to ask for in this kind of film. Is that I just there, like there I, was no. T- I mean, I was just kind of like there was nothing keeping me gripped in this. I was just like, when's it gonna? I when's it, it gonna end? I thought it was a good, good, compelling story. I mean, very, very dopey, but. Um, I like the fact that at the it was end, all a bit daft. It was all daft. Yeah, it was all kind of, of yeah, 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 absolutely. But I, I just thought that it was a, you know almost like kids' TV. He got to the computer. Oh, he's found out where my son is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree. It's a dumb, it's a dumb ass film. But yeah, um, and and one, uh, I think one of the most contrite end taglines of a movie. I mean, the ending. See, the, the ending had me fucking laughing. The very end of the movie, when Tom Selleck's character and his partner, uh, just before they embrace. For the entire credit sequence, yeah, yeah. under some spark. He goes, she goes, can you cook? He goes, try me. No, it was the other way around. He says that. <laughs> he says, can you cook? And she says, try me. Right, whoever yeah, says yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's it's the tritest line of all time. And it's something that is, would get a lot of flack today. Can you cook? <laughs> are we, are we, are we going to be in a relationship? Can you cook? <laughs> And try then, me, yes, then, I, exactly. I, I assure you, I, can I, I assure you, you will not need a robot to make your pasta al dente. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they just kiss for the entire end credit sequence while burnt metal is raining down upon... I was just there going... Those sparks should have set fire to someone's hair. Or, or, or hopefully Tom Sonic, Tom, Tom Selleck's moustache, so there's a Tom bit of that. Tom Sonic. Tom, but, but, hope, but if that had happened, maybe there'd actually been some bona fide action in the film. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, the action was not good. The but action I just... was terrible. I love Action them. was terrible. The vision of the future was flimsy. The robots were rubbish. Uh, Tom it. Selleck was not convincing. I mean, uh, Gene Simmons should never be allowed to and be in he, front of a camera I don't think ever he was. again. I don't think he ever good. Was. <laughs> um, I just, I'm a sucker for a good yarn. I think this is a good uh, yarn. I, just, I just thought it was pish. Well, <laughs> it was crap. I liked it, but it's rubbish. But I liked it. Um, I didn't like it. I'll never watch it. Don't watch it. Do yourself a favour. No, no, I wouldn't just. Rent Magnum PI and see Three Men and a Baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is all right. It's an all right movie. Dung. <laughs> so on to the next. Yeah. Split Second, uh, directed by Tony Malam from 1992. It's 2008. London is suffering from widespread flooding. Detective Harley Stone is a veteran cop haunted by visions of his partner who is killed by a perp he couldn't apprehend. Now the killer is back and on a fresh spree. However, he soon discovers what he is hunting might not be a human. Split second. I unloaded a foot clip, 450 Magnum, point blank. It disappeared. He can hear its heartbeat. Where did he go? He knows it's out there. Somebody must have seen something. He knows what it can do. Are you telling me? There's something running around loose in this city. Ripping the hearts out of people and eating them. Maybe he eats him for breakfast. Now, it's really pissing him off. Foster! And his new partner... I work alone. ...makes two. Paranoid people with guns are a menace to society. You'd be paranoid, too, if you had a dipshit like this following you. Lack of nonos and serial homicide. Oh, terrific. It has no motive. The only thing we know for sure is that he's not a vegetarian. No! It has the DNA structure of all its victims. It gives no warning. We're ready to die. But one thing's for certain. 
We gotta get bigger guns. It ain't no pushover. Two, yeah. Bingo. We want to get to Cannon Street. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, we do. Boy, are you pushy? I wouldn't say this thing thinks it's safe. I say it is safe. Rat bastard! Safety is a deep shit. Get out of there! Five seconds. Okay. Four. Three. Oh. Two. Oh. 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 Rutger Hauer. Split second. Nice timing. Split second. So, Split Second, had uh, you heard of it? Had you seen it before? Certainly heard of it. It, it got slammed by all of the movie magazines I read when I was a kid um, because I was very interested in this movie and it just got slated one-star reviews non-stop across the board. Um, so, yeah, I'd certainly heard of it. Uh, never seen it, so okay. this is my first time. What okay. about you? Uh, no, I'd never... I'd heard of it, yeah. certainly heard of it. Um, I, I, I'd seen it, I'd seen the poster, had seen it when it got released onto VHS, it had different poster artwork to, had it to, to, to what it had in the cinema, um, and had read about it in the likes of Neon Empire, yeah, yeah, Total yeah. Film. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. What did you think? When it started, I thought, pretty quickly, I thought, okay, good, the tongue is firmly in cheek, that first shot of Rutger Hauer strutting away from a fight, I was like, oh, okay, I, I know where we are. This oh, is really, really good. Oh, did you notice anything about that sequence? Uh, no. Okay, so what I noticed about the sequence, Rutger Hauer striding towards camera and his leather coat kind of comes away and you see this pretty hefty gut and he oh. immediately grabs his leather coat and goes, nope, you're not seeing that. <laughs> I didn't know that at all. Because yeah, I mean, he has got a punch and a half in this movie, Rutger Hauer. Wow, okay. He is put on some serious poundage. Oh, I didn't know that. But I thought that was a that really... That cracked me up. I'm gonna, I'll, 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 <laughs> I didn't wear my cover button. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be sure to dig that up for the video. But yeah, I, li- I like the fact that I, was, I thought, okay, we're in B-movie territory. Um, Almost immediately after that, one of the first scenes, it becomes clear that there's a nightclub where the bouncer's a dog. And I was like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm all in for this. Unfortunately, it doesn't maintain that tone. I mean, there are moments where I thought, for the first half, I thought, this plays pretty effectively as a spoof. Yeah. And there was a, a, a little bit of time where I stopped the film to write down the lines of dialogue because they were so cliched. I hear he's the best, is said at one point. The press are going to have a field day. Get forensics on this. And then I stopped and I said, if I do this, I'm going to be doing it through the whole film. So I gave up. Um, no cliche is left unturned. I mean, how it is suspended at the beginning. The doctors say he's crazy. And the, the weirdest thing of all time, wh- why in the future do we have to go to fetish clubs where women dress in fetish and dance? And the, I mean, I it's the future. Why is that? Oh, that that's, a, that's, a, that's a cliche that just will not go away. It's so weird. Um, what do you, what, what, did you like this? So, this, uh, this is what uh, this is my uh, feelings after. I'd say the opening twenty minutes, maybe okay. fifteen. Okay, so I'll go. I'll go with the opening twenty minutes as okay, well. Okay. So, um, so you're introduced to um, Harley Stone, Rutger Hauer, um, who is hunting a serial killer who who murdered his partner, and he rocks up to this nightclub where said Rottweiler <laughs> is there, right? It's in charge. And uh, he he knocks on the door, and um, in two thousand and eight, he pays fifty sheets to go and see a wobbly bummed leather clad dominatrix yeah. shake her sailor like jelly hindquarters in his grill <laughs> for 50 sheets I say no injury <laughs> I will not pay you that money <laughs> I will not pay you that money um, yeah it's it, it makes me laugh because also I, I will, I'll go back to the, the gut of Rutger Hauer is that he has an extremely large big belt buckle to take your gaze off his off his <laughs> gut as well wow, yeah. um, they're doing everything to avert your attention from that gut of his it's a funny performance it's a it's a weird performance from Rutger Hauer because like it's kind of he really doesn't give a shit like yeah, he, he's yeah. doing some lines he's delivering seriously some lines he doesn't deliver. apparently I was reading that there was a lot of kind of dis- discontent on the film set and Rutger Hauer wasn't very pleased with how things were going there was this is a film that was played with loads of rewrite, rewrites yeah, yeah. the end sequence especially was done extremely fast and it actually changed director yeah. so he's, uh, uh, Rutger Hauer's another guy who I think is very likeable but he's not someone he, he's kind of someone to cut to not linger on 
he's not a lead. Um, he, he, when the camera lingers on him, he looks down like antsy. I mean, I don't know whether that's just down to the. I mean, again, he's not. He, he's never really convinced me as a leading man. He's one of those performers who usually benefits from very, very good editing, and he's not great at holding the attention. So mm. when the camera lingers on him, and he just seems, yeah. he just seems like it's a almost guy. like it's almost like sometimes he slips out of character yeah, yeah, exactly. as well, which yeah. is kind of just fucking odd. But he's so brilliant when he's a support in a supporting yeah. role, and yeah. I just think that it, it, he it, this is the wrong role for him, or maybe he is so disinterested and fed up with all the shenanigans. Yeah, that it, but yeah. yeah, I think it's a bit of a pugnacious, pugnacious performance at times. Um, I mean, there's so many. I mean, Christ, there's only how many times that he grabs people by the throat yeah, right. but he's just not a physically imposing no, he isn't, presence no, that's, that's, it's, it's bad casting in that sense um, yeah. and, and this film is cheap I mean it's cheap as very soggy chips um, it, it's a very cheap movie and they reuse sets Christ do they reuse sets in this film we, yeah, we mentioned previously on another episode about you're yeah, surprised I think it was a Space Truckers episode about not reusing a set yeah. oh, there, is, there is no worry about that here yeah, really Let's go back to the crime scene. Let's go back to the bar. Let's go, you know. There's a lot of a lot of rehashing. That street scene looks remarkably good. Oh like my street god! Scene that we've how seen ten times before? Yeah. This the one street we can drive down. <laughs> yeah. The water sloppy everywhere, yeah. fl- flowing everywhere. Yeah. Um, this is a this is a this film is kind of like a mashup of, of genres. It's kind of, it starts off being a um, in pursuit of a serial killer movie mm-hmm. and then it's kind of becomes a, a buddy cop movie mm-hmm. um, and then it becomes kind of a bit of a kind of a horror kind of there's, there's some horror sort of trope sci- sci-fi stuff going, going on in there it's a bit all over the shop it's like there's a moment in the first half of the film there's a few moments in the first sort of half of the film where it's kind of alluded to that Rutger Hauer has come some kind of sixth sense which then they don't even touch That's upon yeah, for yeah, the yeah, rest yeah. of the movie, yeah. which is just a bit fucking odd. Mm. Um, the thing about Rock Howard, you know, as we said, he's, I mean, I, I just feel like he's not a, not a leading man, but he is charming. But in a really goofy way. Yeah. I just feel his but, performance, he's meant to be, okay, I mean, whether this is going to be tongue in cheek, I, I don't know. He's meant to be this kind of man over the, you know, I'm this kind of crazy, I'm a grizzle cop, Mel Gibson esque, I'm fucking volatile, I'm, you know, and, and what his vice is? Coffee, lots of sugar, and chocolate. Yeah, I mean, he, but he, uh, there are moments when he's really absent minded. I mean, my favourite moment in the whole film is when he's in conversation with his partner and they're trying to solve the mystery, and Pete Postlethwaite comes in just giving him aggro. And he grab, you know, he does his. No. How many times he grabs people grab by, them by, the, grab by the throat or pushes them against the wall? Yeah, right. But then he walks back to his partner and he's like, what, like a puzzled drunk what, what were we talking about what, what were we talking about again I was like, that, that was a really nice little moment it's a shame that there wasn't more of that because the film's slightly haphazard but um, what, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kim Cattrall goes back to his dirty disgusting horrific apartment and for some reason Rutger Hauer has used some kind of adhesive to stick a load of chocolates to the outside of his dirty disgusting refrigerator in yeah. the shape of a heart yeah, I don't know yeah. whether we did that before Kim Cattrall came back on the scene or whether we did that as a nice treat for her it's a dirty, disgusting fridge with stuck chocolates. And Kim Cattrall just goes, oh yeah, I'll eat one of those. And I thought, don't, don't eat that. Later on, you see a shot of the fridge and they're all gone. And it's like, why is it implying that she just ate a whole load of fucking chocolate? <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't know that. <laughs> that, was just, that, was a, that was like a, a real what the fuck moment. Um, it, this <laughs> film does, I mean, it, it kind of, I had a goodwill towards it for, for, for quite a while, but it loses steam big time. And then it, you know, as it becomes them trying to solve the occult mystery. It, it, just, it, it just descends in, 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 into, into ridiculousness. And we're culminating in a really, really lacklustre final sequence yeah, it's whack. It's whack. terrible and it's a shame because the first beginning of it is just like yeah okay serial killer okay context his partner was taken down by this serial killer all oh, all's not quite what it can seem is it an animal is it a beast is it a kind of do you know what I mean yeah. the, the, it was, I was engrossed and also I'm a very I'm a big sucker and I've said it before in the podcast I'm a big sucker for an American film to be have a London setting because yeah. what you get with that is you get some really good English kind of character actors in there and, and, and you mentioned him before Pete Pothelswaite's in it and, and stand out for me is, is Alan Armstrong um, I mean Alan Armstrong he's, he's like the chief of police he's the ball breaking yeah, yeah, yeah. shouty um, uh, commandant commandant <laughs> Commandant. Was this actually in America? I mean, I know the script was originally intended to be set in America and they rewrote it, uh, I think, it, but wasn't it bought by any... I mean, this doesn't... I don't think this was a Hollywood production, was it? This is a British movie, isn't it? I think it's an American studio, mate. It's filming it in the UK. I thought it, the script was bought. I'm not sure. This, I, I don't... I, it's, got, it's got quite a complicated... Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I've, got, I've, got, I've, I've got no idea of the financing or... What, 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 but, I mean, it's an American director. American no, producer. Tony Manning's English. 
Oh, all right. And they're both English. Is it a completely English thing? No, no. I think oh. what it originally it was, this <coughs> it was meant to be in the states, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they rewrote it to a couple because I think but, I think an upstart English uh, uh, production company oh, bought okay. the script. So I think it was. Fun. I mean, that would explain why it looks so shit because an American production would never really. Uh, would they? It's it, cheap. It looks like English TV. I mean, it doesn't look like English TV. Actually, the, the, it's an ugly film, and it's kind of it's a stylized film by people with no sense of style. They just keep moving floodlights about. There'll be scenes where everyone's backlit by some floodlight behind them, and then there's a scene where everyone's... Uh, lit yeah, from it's, a, uh, it it's looks, pretty inconsistent. It looks like shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, on VHS, this fucking killed it. This was like number one spot on VHS in the UK. It did really well on the rental market. Really? Mm. Um, I think it flopped to the cinema, but did really well on the rental market. Okay, there's some, see, I'm not unhappy to learn that. At the same time, I was thinking this is not a very good film. No, I mean, I mean, we, we, I mean, we, and we, I mean, I have to, I have to talk about the ending. The, I mean, the ending is an absolute steaming keg of shit. Yeah, it's not. Great. It is terrible. Yeah. They have that scene where they're getting tooled up, and you're going, "Yes, oh yeah, actually, okay, yeah, this yeah. is going to come." They're getting tooled up. They're getting big weapons. Um, it's going to kick off. It doesn't kick off. It doesn't kick off at all. You get introduced to Michael J. Pollard as a rat catcher. Yeah. Um, he pops up for five minutes, mm-hmm. gets killed. Um, and then it's just a really confusing action set piece at the end. Yeah, the, You're yeah. like, where, where is the, where's the monster? And, oh, his hand's shot through the roof and tracks down the entire roof of, his, of a train. Yeah. And then Rook Gehauer offs him by grabbing his heart out of his chest and does a Mortal Kombat finishing Yeah, move. I don't know, yeah. I mean, it just that was the it, it was just, te- it, it was a terrible ending. It, it, just before that, isn't that the bit where Tony Malum like basically left the production? Isn't it? Yeah, that, the, the, last, the last the last part of the film was fa- was was filmed by Ian Sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ian Sharp did the whole last. I mean, and that's probably where the bulk of the money went because obviously to to flood a fucking tube station, you can't do it. So all of it is is set, mm. but it's just a, a really poorly executed action sequence yeah, cool. and the look of the fucking creature is it's a, it's a man in a suit with a fucking venom head yeah it's rubbish rubbish I mean if you like this kind of stuff I think you will like this because you know this is what B movies were in that era you know it doesn't deviate from formula you'd never all. have this film you'd never have this made today no no well I think it would be a hell of a lot better I mean I think it, I mean it's so reluctant to deviate from formula but it is one of those movies that you know there's a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, Enthusiasm. People really have fond memories of there, this. There is a lot of uh, fans of this movie online, mm. um, and I don't. I mean, I, the, the thing that kind of I, I don't know, kind of uh, is my Achilles here is that it's filmed in the it's filmed in London. Mm. It has uh, you know Rutger Hauer's in it, um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, this was filmed over eight rapid weeks. It was just rushed out. Knights of White Satin. Fucking that's, hell! Yeah, that's that's a weird. They obviously they bought the rights to it, did a cover version, and uh, they didn't have the Moody Blues. They couldn't, <laughs> but they got someone to cover it, and it's played incessantly throughout this fucking movie. Yeah, big time. I mean, the, the uh, my favourite thing in the film is the shooting range sequence. Oh yeah, yeah. because there aren't any shooting ranges, uh, you know, where cops go like in America, obviously. Mm. So they make this kind of it's like three wooden rectangles with a circle on, like three planks with a bobble on top mm. and try and make it look from a distance like it's one of those American shooting ranges it's so ropey it must have cost them shrapnel to do it mm. stick three planks I mean it looks so it looks yeah. so piss poor I thought it was actually going to be a spoof or I thought it played really I wished well it, as a spoof yeah, I wished it played it for last but completely this is all of those one star slatings it got I can totally understand this is not a good film but I think there's a lot to like just because it's definitely more it's more it's more affable than a one star movie I still think it's a terrible film and I think I'd give it one a, I'd give it 1.5 it's I, I'm not I, I did I can understand why people like it especially our generation Predator the, the things that it's cribs from mm. even though it does all of it quite badly mm. um I can't help but have a little bit of a soft spot for it, but no, it's, no, this is, that's, yeah, that's what I said. It's not like, do you know what I mean? It's not. I, I did not. I didn't. It didn't wind me up as much as as, as Runaway. Like in terms of just like I was just bored. I wasn't bored on this. I was just like this is fucking goofy as fuck. But at least I wasn't bored by it. At least it was like it was trying to do action. It was trying to do. You know, in a, in a more of a kind of a gripping way, that there is characters in danger. If you is... if you weren't alive when this was made, there's nothing to see here. Don't I would not recommend this to anybody who wasn't. Al- I mean, because the nostalgia factor is strong with this one. Yeah. There's no way that this isn't a better. This isn't a worse movie than Runaway. Runaway's better than this. I know which one I enjoyed more. 
I, I think I would rather drink like a case of beer and watch Split Second than drink a case of beer and watch Runaway. Split Second is an attempt. I mean, it's not. It, it's so. It's so almost. It's comically derivative. And I do have a soft spot for it, but I. It's not. Well, I think it's quite funny. It's, it's just like it's so fucking cheap as soggy chips. I've said it before. It's it's trying to be something. Okay, if Martin Scorsese burst into this room right now and said, "What's a better film?" I don't care about drinking beer. Recommend me a movie tonight. <laughs> I'm going to go to this is a movie tonight, and I'm going to see a reissue of uh, 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 one of these two movies. I'll be going, Martin. Will you be going to the pub before you this screening? Yeah, yeah. We'll go, if you're going we'll to drink, go for a beer. Who are you going with? Who are you going with? Who are you seeing it with? Bobby De Niro, Joe Pesci. Who, who are you seeing yeah, it with? Yeah, they've just wrapped their Netflix show, and they're all going to go and watch it together. I think I'm not going to come with them. Yeah. And, 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 no the recommendations in my trade. head. You basically look. No, which movie is better? The film I enjoyed more was Split Second. The the more the better made movie is but, Runaway. But what, what do you? There's more money. It's a it's a lush. Yeah, it's, but that's, it's, that's, that's, ton, that's, that's, it's got a ton of money thrown at it. That doesn't make that, that doesn't necessarily mean the film's better. What? No, no, no. So uh, the film I enjoyed more was Split Second, right? But I can't I can't deny the better movie. The the better made movie was Runaway. But I'd rather watch Split Second than Runaway. So Split Second is your choice for when it is. Okay. Mine's run away, definitely. Mine's <laughs> we need to do... This is amazing. Two calls to the Ostinator. Two calls in a row. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I don't want to watch Run Away ever again. Split second I can watch again. I could probably watch both of them again, to be perfectly honest. Um, and in the right environment, split second would I just be... Not, I'm just not getting really enjoyment out of Runaway. Yeah, I liked it. I, it's, I just, it's aged crushingly bad. I don't think... It's, it's got a terrible... Tom Selleck should not be in fucking uh, feature. And he movie. wasn't. He, 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 well, that's why. Yeah, I know. I totally... And Gene was. Simmons is, is the I worst agree. on-screen baddie who's ever been committed to celluloid. I totally agree. This is, so very, this is very similar to the discussion we had about the Coleman movies because all that I think is the most important thing is that the story is well told and I think that that is something you can say about Runaway. You can't say it about Split Second. And the, but, it's, the, but I think it's, it's, attempting to tell us, it's attempting to tell a story but it's just, it's convoluted because there's so many things, it, it's, it's, it's multiple genres. Okay, so let's find out what the Austinator has to say. He's hope. He, I I I strongly think he's seen hopefully at least one of these movies. Oh shit! We got a tiebreaker. Ostinator, Ostinator, QSK, QSK. We're trying to find an Ostinator. Ostinator in the building right about now. Oh my days! Thank God for that. We have got a predicament and a half here. We've got two films head to head, toe to toe, and we can't find a winner. So we're turning to you. We have got Runaway versus Split Second. What are you saying? Uh, first of all, let, let's kick off with Runaways. It's the earlier film here, directed and written by Michael Crichton. Love Michael Crichton. Love his work. Love his views on dystopian futures. However, this one is let down by the lack of CGI and technology. The ideas are there. The execution is weak at times with some of the attacking robots. However, there are many saving graces in this film. Uh, one of which is obviously Tom Selleck being the man with the moustache. Uh, fantastic. Doing the whole shtick as he should. However, for me, some of the supporting cast are the ones that really still the show. I'm talking Kirstie Alley being absolutely incredible in the 80s. Sexy as everything. Love it. Also the actor that played Captain Harris in the Police Academy films has a lovely turn in this one. Today hooks today. Today hooks today. Yeah. Um, some of the, the, yeah, as I said, the CGI lets it down. However, I feel uh, Crichton's idea behind this and the kind of automation and AI of robots taking over is an idea that's above and beyond the sum of its parts. Uh, um, so personally, I think this one gets the edge, but let's have a little talk about Split Second. Oh my God, this is the film that Blade Runner could have been. Joke. I love Rutger Hauer very much. I think he was the go-to guy at this time. Um, I love the fact there's a, a film set in this flooded London with rats, um, which is great for me. It's really nice to see London in the, you know, I think it was early 90s when this was made, uh, and amazing shots around the city and everything else um, but for me a, a lot of it kind of um, got lost Kim Cattrall's sideburns let's talk about that for a minute uh, I think she's just 
come off the Star Trek shoot. So uh, she was just straight as she looked in those ones, exactly. Um, listen, there was a lot of fun. I liked the buddy cop banter uh, between Stone and Durkin. I thought that was really, really interesting. Um, sadly, the, the, the kind of uh, crescendo, the alien monster at the end, which looked straight out of Geiger, for me was too short and weak. Um, and the taking the heart out scene, for me, you know, it could have been a lot um, more Exality. intricate. Exactly. It was very, very um, Mortal Kombat. Um, it's a very close one. Two films of the same sort of caliber. But in this occasion, I've just got to exit to run away. So, Ostinator, over and out. Peace. Eliminate with the Ostinator. Okay, well, that was the Ostinator's verdict. I hope he went the right way. Run let's, away let's all hope. day. Let's hope. Run away all no day. No way. Long. No way. <laughs> Split second. Split second is a very, very endearing... It is far more endearing than Runaway. Far more endearing than Runaway. Why do you hate Tom Selleck so much? Because he is stiffer than an ironing board. Okay, well, Honestly, I, I find it quite awkward that he's on screen. I, find, I feel kind of like... Ooh, he's so... Stiff. <laughs> <laughs> right, well look. Oscillator chose right, and if he didn't, shame on him. Yeah, so I've had some correspondence on this. Al Winter um, about these two films, Split Second, Easy. Huh. Um, and we've got a correspondence on Twitter. Uh, Whirlwind Reports. Wow, Runaway, it's been so long since I've seen that movie. Tom Selleck, Gene Simmons, Magical Bullets and Killer Robot Spiders equals awesome. No doubt. Paul Sutton, the real cat lad. <laughs> Not Runaway versus Split Second. How can I choose between them? Love them both. Well, fair but, enough. but fair enough, you really do love Split Second more than me. No, 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 no. He sounded like a runaway man to me. Oh, Runaway. What a daft but fun load of bollocks. Damn Terminator right. killed it. Cyan boy. Cyan boy. Yeah, Thank see, you. that's, that's uh, that, on the Wikipedia, it's like, yeah, it blames the lack of success on things like Terminator. One of the Star Treks came out just before as well. Thank you very much for listening. Um, as always, look, let's keep things going. If you've got an opinion on the films that we've covered in this week's episode, Twitter. Facebook message us, email us, um, and we'll be back in another couple of weeks. Cheers. See you in two weeks. Have a... Cult Film Face Off. is named Runaway and it stars Tom Selleck, the man from Magnum P.I., as a cop of the future, the near future, when household robots are part of our everyday lives. The robots prepare dinner and do the housekeeping, and once in a while they go a little bit berserk and start killing their masters. Well, that's the price you pay for progress. Selleck plays a cop whose assignment is to go after those crazy robots and put them out of business when they go on a murderous rampage. Then he comes up against a villain played by Gene Simmons of the rock group KISS, who wants to control this futuristic technology in order to gain personal power. In this scene, Selleck and the villain, Simmons, trade hostages as they battle over technical secrets. I love the technology there. See, those bullets are little computerized bullets that have your name on them, and they can find you by your own heat pattern, but they move so slowly. Did you notice that? Yes. He could dodge it. This is really terrific. You see it coming and you dodge and it misses you. This is really a breakthrough. <laughs> Runaway has good performances in it by Selleck and by Gene Simmons. They're interesting to watch, especially in the final showdown where they fight on top of a skyscraper under construction. But basically, this is really a very ridiculous movie. And those wonderful weapons are the most ridiculous part of it. I yeah. never have been able to understand exactly why these people feel that, you know, the whole villain thing, I want to rule the world. And you never know why he wants to rule the world. Well, because he wants to rule the world because he's a villain. Right. That's, uh -huh. you know, that's the way these guys are, right? right. You know, okay. not like us. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> the, um, I thought it had a terrific premise. I like the idea of, you know, the robot technology going nuts uh -huh. and having all of this crawl over us and having yeah. a guy like Selleck have to do this job. Mm -hmm. And I like the sort of disdainful way he did it. It could have been a little bit of a comedy. And it's cute, but then it just falls apart. And, yeah. when, it, and when it turns into a simple chase film, mm -hmm. well, then we might this as well be in another kind of picture. My pet peeve of the Christmas season is that every picture, every other picture, Beverly Hills Cop Good is idea. the same way, uh, City Heat the same way. At the end, well, City Heat never had a beginning no. either, but at the end, it turns into another 
chase, yeah. another confrontation. It's never dealt with in terms of characters. Yeah. And as far as the machines, yeah. at the beginning of this film, it was, the I, were fun. Yeah. Remember Woody Allen and Sleeper, all yeah. the fun he had with machines? No, I thought this was going to be real good in the beginning because it also doesn't tip you off that it's, it's set in the future. Mm -hmm. And I think it was very clever. Michael Crichton did this film, but then it just dissolves into the chase. chase. So much for Tom Selleck. It's Steve Ray. Steve Ray? Yeah. Who suggested this? Fucking episode six. Okay, okay. What episode number? 60. Steve Ray. Steve okay. Ray, yep. Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 60. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. Hello. And I am Nick Leonard. In this week's episode, we are going to be taking a look at two sci-fi action crime films. First out the box and short-circuiting causing murderous intent is Runaway from 1984. Steve Ray. Fucking Steve Ray. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 60. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. Hey, yo. And I am Nick Leonard. In this week's episode, we are going to be taking a look at two sci-fi action crime films. First out the box, fucking Steve Ray. <laughs> yeah, just say, so you could have slotted it in right there. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 60. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. Hey, yo. And I am Nick Leonard. First up, we want to say thank you for Steve Ray for suggesting this pair of sci fi action crime <laughs> films. <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> Sorry, it's just because you said thank you for Steve Ray. <laughs> thank you for Steve Ray. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Ray! He's a cunt. That's a concept. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to Steve Ray. The man's a fucking martyr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the Steve Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 60. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. Hey, yo. And I am Nick Leonard. We are going to be taking a look at Steve Ray. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have said that we could be taking a look at two sides of Incidentally, thank you to Steve Ray. Courtesy of Steve Ray. <laughs> No, it's, Thank, you it's Steve Steve <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for Steve Ray. <laughs> for Sinny Sin Sin. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, he know what I'm on. Steve Ray, Reverend Steve Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 60. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. Hey, yo. And I am Nick Leonard. In this week's episode, we are going to be taking a look at two sci-fi action crime films, courtesy of Steve Ray. Thanks, Steve Ray. A.K.A. <laughs> 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 Diamond Dog. A.K.A. <laughs> 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 Cyrus the Virus. <laughs> Steve Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Cult Film Face Off, episode 60. With me, as always, is Chet Roivas. There's only one Steve Ray. <laughs> one Steve Ray. There's only one, one Stevie Ray. Ray. <laughs> He's got two names as a first name. He's got two. <laughs> Fuck it up. Two Christian names to his name. Steve Ray. Steve Ray. <laughs> Honest as the day, Steve Ray. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Steve Ray Faceoff. 